Hello Interwebs and welcome to my review of The Mandalorian Season 3! Wait, uh, that, that doesn't seem right. Yes, Interwebs, jokes aside, I am actually here to review the latest episode of Star Wars, The Book of Boba Fett, Episode 5, The Return of the Mandalorian. As per usual, I'll stay spoiler free, but being honest with you, the, the biggest spoiler is, is in the title of the episode, so... There you go, Mando's back. Sorry, not much I can do about it, that's the spoiler. But regardless, staying spoiler free up front, I have a lot of thoughts about this episode. Not even to do necessarily with the plot itself, but just the whole concept behind this episode. Because on the one hand, Quite frankly, this is the best episode of The Book of Boba Fett. I loved this episode. It, top to bottom, I was entertained, I was engaged, I loved every second of it. But the problem is, this isn't an episode of The Book of Boba Fett. This is an episode of The Mandalorian. We are basically following The Mandalorian, good old Mando himself, throughout the entirety of this episode. And quite honestly, if this episode had been the season 3 premiere of The Mandalorian, I would have been like, yeah, this feels like the premiere episode of the Mandalorian, and the only thing that really connects it to Boba Fett's going on is the hook at the end of this that connects him wanting to go and be the muscle for Boba Fett, which we already kind of knew at the end of last episode. Now, on the one hand, I totally understand needing to do a little bit of setup of where Mando is before bringing him into the book of Boba Fett, because Mando had a big change in his life at the end of season two with him giving Grogu to Luke Skywalker. So I understand that they need to do a little bit of groundwork to say like, this is where Mando's out before bringing him into the main storyline of Boba Fett. But that feels like it should have just been a scene of him just being badass and seeing where he was at and then him going into Boba Fett's story because that's what this series is about. But instead, this episode spends the entire runtime of it going over a lot of Mando's journey and focusing in on him. And it feels weird because there's a lot of exposition and baits in this episode that go over like exposition of the Darksaber, um, his place within Mandalorian society now that uh, he has shown his face and things like that, um, showing where his new ship is and things like that. Like all that stuff that goes on in this episode feels like it is almost necessary for Mandalorian season three. Now I'm sure there'll be some effort made at the beginning of Mandalorian season three done for people who have not seen Boba Fett to sort of catch in on where Mando's at. But it really does feel like this is the first episode of that show and it feels like it's pretty much kind of necessary in order to tell that part of his story. And to me, I feel like there's a cynical like part of my mind that feels like that is entirely part of the point. I feel like what Disney is trying to do with this is kind of a cynical thing of being like, well, if you want to know what's happening with The Mandalorian, if you really want to stay all the way up on Mandalorian Season 3 when that starts, you got to watch Book of Boba Fett and vice versa. And so it just feels like it's this cynical mindset to get people to watch both shows when maybe someone wasn't interested in The Book of Boba Fett or vice versa, someone wasn't interested in The Mandalorian. So they're putting an episode of The Mandalorian in here so people may uh, go watch The Mandalorian if they had never seen it because they wanted to watch B Boba Fett. And so it just feels like that cynical thing and I don't mind it here and there in some elements of TV shows. Like, there's been backdoor pilots. There's been, like, crossovers and things with a bunch of other TV shows throughout time. But here, it just really feels like they took an episode, placed it here, and just have that cynical mindset. And you can feel it within that whole concept of this. And on top of that, it just feels so ancillary to the story that we've been following. So it just feels like it just stopped cold and stopped being interested in what was going on with Boba Fett to tell us this whole other episode. But even that being said, I feel like I'm being hyper negative on this. And while I have that frustration with the cynicism that I feel behind this episode, in and of itself, this episode is fantastic. I loved it top to bottom. I was really enjoying it. So there's this pull between me of being like, I'm frustrated at the whole placement of this series, what it means for Boba Fett, what it means for the Mandalorian, what it th means with their thinking of Star Wars and that sort of cynicism behind getting everyone to watch all their corporate synergy nonsense. And then there's just me being like someone who's enjoying it and being like, this is a fun episode, but I'm someone who gobbles all this stuff up anyways. And so I just, it feels like very corporate-y and frustrating and yet also just fun in and of itself. So that I kind of have to sit in that and so that's my kind of spoiler-free thoughts on this. Uh, I'm just frustrated with that whole kind of feeling because it's a great episode. I enjoyed it heavily. If you're a Mandalorian fan, you're going to love it. If you're a Boba Fett fan, you're going to feel frustrated. But also, if you're a Star Wars fan just in general, you'll probably like it either way. But I feel that this episode just does a disservice to the story that it was trying to tell and also is very cynical. But I also loved it. So there you go. Spoiler-free review. There it is. Okay, now that we're getting into the spoiler-filled discussion, I'm going to set aside my rant there and just take the episode for what it is. 
just know that that's my overriding feeling with this, but I'm going to just talk about the episode on its own terms and take it on its own terms for our spoiler filled discussion. So that being said, opening up the episode, uh, Mando being a badass bounty hunter again, you know, we're seeing like he's kind of back at the place that he was at way back in the first episode of season one of Mandalorian. This is sort of what he was doing before he met Grogu. So he sort of returned to that life and he's kind of a badass, but the big difference is he has the dark saber. So I love that whole intro fight sequence and in the rough and tumble feel of it. Again, I love that. I love the like grittiness that Mando brings that it's just like he gets into these fights, but he gets hurt along the way. It has that sort of John Wickian Star Wars feel to it that I just really love. Um, and I love that him talking down the workers and saying like hey i just killed your boss you have everything he has if you let me go and they just go through and then i really loved when we got to the actual uh world that mando is on and we see it's like a big halo ring and that was so cool because i've n like i've never seen that in the star wars setting like a halo ring i've seen that in other fictions like in um halo being the biggest and most obvious one but it was just cool to see this in a star wars setting because it felt so unique to star wars to the show like i've never seen that in star wars before and yet it makes perfect sense that that would be something that would would exist in this universe so uh, on so many levels it was wonderful then we got that wonderful one take shot with him going in the elevator going up coming out to the bar and going back in it, again it kind of gave a sense of life and like the like hugeness of this uh, station that he's on getting to see it on the background just on a technical level that was great and I loved him being like I don't care to sit down and talk to people I'm just looking for the thing that I'm looking for and just let me get there I'm trying to find the Mandalorians just help me out and he's so disinterested in this dinner and I just I, I liked that whole sequence it was wonderful but then then he goes down to find his old Mandalorian friends from the other season. They're now kind of been decimated uh, after the events of season, uh, I believe, one of the Mandalorian. And so, uh, and it was cool to like finally catch back up with them. And he, it, this whole sequence is also really wonderful. But again, we're getting into this whole exposition stuff that I feel like should be in the Mandalorian. But again, setting that aside, we get some explanation of Bo-Katan and the history of uh, Mandalore uh, after the Empire rose. We get to see Mandalore being destroyed. We get to see the K2SO type robot robots just wiping everything out which is a really cool visual to see um and sort of getting a reference to where Bo-Katan is sort of seen as a failure of the Mandalorians nowadays and then also the exposition of the Darksaber of whoever wields the Darksaber is sort of like seen as possibly the true leader of Mandal Mandalore which I'm interested to see if that's where they're setting up Mando to go that he might end up being the ruler of Mando uh Mandalore of a new Mandalore um into season three now that Grogu's gone I also liked that he also gave up the best car spear because he's building out a little thing for Grogu and and I, I love the sort of different ideas between the ways of the Jedi and uh, Mandalorians with Jedi sort of being like isolate yourself and remove connections, whereas Mandalorians are sort of like we're all about loyalty and family. And so I'm going to go and be with my little baby Grogu, you dang it. And so I, I like that he just melted down the Beskar spear into making a um, something for um for Grogu. I thought that that was absolutely sweet uh, and perfectly fits him as a character and I love the competing philosophies there. And then I also like seeing him get trained and that he was weak and not really good with the saber, that he can wield it but he's not very competent with it. Uh, and I thought that that was really cool to just sort of see that with the dark saber. And then I liked the final, this battle, the showdown he had with the guy who sort of, this is going to be his life now with people constantly fighting him for the dark saber to earn it to get the, to lead the Mandalorians. And so I think that that's sort of a good setup of like, this is going to be the dynamic of his life going into this from now on. And I like that he wins that fight, but he wins it without using the dark saber. Um, so kind of showing that he's still a good fighter, but he's just not good with that saber at all. So he's going to have to go get trained with it, which might be like he'll go to Luke Skywalker and get trained with a dark saber by Luke Skywalker, which might be a cool thing to see in season three. That's my possible speculation um, with that. Or maybe Ahsoka herself, uh, considering we have setting up an Ahsoka series. So he might go and get trained by her instead. So that would also be kind of interesting. And again, have that corporate uh, Disney synergy uh, feeling to it. But what are you going to do? Anywho, um, I do also like that he's sort of ostracized from the Mandalorians now because he showed his face. And I love that, like, awkward hesitancy that he had in that moment before he um, stated anything. So he was like, I don't want to admit this. And I love the moment where he says, I want to submit myself to, um, to re you know, f redeem myself in your eyes. And he's like, the only way to do it is to go to these caves that no longer exist. And that's the way. So you can't redeem yourself. Very depressing. Um, it was just a cool sort of turn on this is the way as a catchphrase. And it's just like, yeah, can't do anything about it now. And so it seems kind of a weird, unfortunate break, break in their system. But what are you going to do? Um, so then he leaves and goes back to Tatooine, uh, back to Princess Carolyn, which the actress who uh, is like this like Tatooine person. Uh, I forget her name in the show, the the sort of engineer on here on Tatooine. But she's play, she's Princess Carolyn from Bojack Horseman, which always kind of blows my mind. Um, and she gives him a uh, Naboo fighter from uh, Episode 1, Star Wars Episode 1. Really cool to see that. I love her trying to sell it to him. This whole, the whole All of her stuff was great. I thought she was 
was very funny. Like, I dated a Jawa once, and Jawa was ground stuff for me, and then working to build out the new Starfighter was a lot of fun. Um, and then him going into, uh, you know, the canyon from, you know, that we heard referenced in Star Wars Episode Four. We even see a Womp Rat, presumably, was what that was, and him just riding through and really loving this new ship, uh, going up into space and just, like, kicking butt and just riding around, just having a fun joyride, and then getting pulled over by two um, of the uh, New Republic uh, soldiers, and they basically try to ask him questions about, like, his involvement in some of the stuff that we've seen back in The Mandalorian, and he's like, uh, bye, see ya, and just skedaddles out of there and returns back to Tatooine, and um, Princess Carolyn tells him that Fennec Shan has shown up and needs his uh, help to, um... Uh, help with all the stuff going on with Boba Fett. He agrees to do it uh, pro bono, but he's going to go find a little friend first. He's going to say hello to my little friend, which uh, I, I doubt it, but it might be fun if uh, we see Grogu show up at the end of Boba Fett and just kick butt. It's like, yeah, I got a Jedi on my side, jerks. Uh, what are you going to do about it? And so uh, that might be a fun thing. I doubt that that's what they're going with it, Grogu showing up. I'd, I'd be surprised if he's going to come and Yoda it up. But, uh, but it might happen. It's it's quite possible. It's definitely in the setup there. So we'll see how that shakes out. So ultimately, like I said, at the end of the day, uh, speaking about this episode, taking this episode as is, on its own terms, it is really great. It is a great return to the Mandalorian, solid visual storytelling, great action, great exposition showing us where him where Mando is and setting him up on his journey into season three of his show, um, and then sort of connecting at the end to Boba Fett's stuff. I just am frustrated with the whole concept concept of this episode within the book of Boba Fett as an episode. It just reeks of that corpus energy. And I know ideally this isn't what Disney Plus would do, but what I would have actually preferred is if both Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian were going on at the same time, and this was billed as the first episode of The Mandalorian Season 3. I know that that probably has to do with production schedules and every other piece of stuff going on here. So there's a lot of moving parts that wouldn't necessarily happen. So maybe this is the only thing they could do um, in order to get this timeline to fit in terms of their production as well. But honestly, I would have rather this just been billed in an episode of Mandalorian and then connected to Book of Boba Fett. Because I feel like structurally that would have made just more sense. Um, so ultimately, like the episode on its own terms... Uh, as an episode of Mandalorian, it's fantastic. Actually, one of the better episodes of Mandalorian that I've seen. I deeply enjoyed it. But as a, an episode of the Book of Boba Fett, it feels weird and kind of corporate -y nastiness to it. So that's my thoughts on this episode. Very, uh, very distinct feelings on it in a lot of different ways. Um, but I'd love to hear all your thoughts down in the comments below. What did you think of the episode? Did you like it? Did, were you less frustrated as I was by this sort of concept of the episode? Um, did you love the episode on its own terms as well? I'd love to hear all that down below. But beyond that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you all live long and stay sexy, my friends.